Hello and welcome to section 4, where the fun begins. In this section you are going to get your hands on DC GANs and auxiliary GANs. Let's get started. In the first lecture I shall focus on understanding the concepts behind deep convolutional GANs or DC GANs. Convolution filters is a concept that has its origins in the signal processing, digital image processing, and it carried on to be the cornerstone of the modern deep learning revolution. The convolution filter is slid over every pixel of the source image, and a dot product is calculated to find out the new pixel value in that location. The values in the filter are initialized with random values, and then the optimal values are learned along with the network parameters by backpropagation. Unlike digital image processing where one designs the values of the filter on his own, to perform a specific task such as blurring an image or extracting edges, in convolutional networks we allow the network to design its own filters. It starts to learn useful features such as edges, corners and shapes. The opposite operation of convolution is the transpose convolution. The process is reversed and the resulting matrix is larger than the original one. For every pixel of the input, the filter is applied to produce a region equal to the size of the filter. Usually convolutions are followed by a max pooling layer to perform dimensionality reduction. For example, a max pooling of 2 by 2 results in shrinking every 4 pixels to only 1 pixel. The value of the new pixel is the maximum value in the original 2x2 region. Again, the max pooling has an inverse operation, which goes sometimes by the name max unpooling. The model has however to bookmark the locations of the max values, so that it can fill them back. That is while doing max pooling, the location of the max value is reserved, then when applying max unpooling, that location is filled, and the others are set to zero. There is a variation of this approach which fills all the pixels with the same value. Why do we choose max pooling over average pooling? Why do we hard code this operation? Can we let the network learn how to downsample and upsample on its own? This turns out to be a better solution that allows GANs to converge faster. One of the parameters of a convolutional layer is the stride or the step. If we slide the window one pixel at a time, then this is called a convolution of stride equals one. On the other hand, if the window is slid two pixels at a time along the horizontal and the vertical directions, this is called convolution with a stride equals two, or more commonly strided convolution. It turns out that this technique allows GANs to learn better downsampling and upsampling filters. The resulting images this way are going to have fewer artifacts. The same applies to convolution and transpose convolution. In basic GANs, we have used a sigmoid activation at the output layer to squash the values between 0 and 1. In deep convolutional GANs, it is recommended to use Tansh activation. This will result in values squashed between negative 1 and plus 1. It was found empirically that this produces more appealing results. However, we should not forget to scale the values of the training images to be in the same range. That is, instead of 0 to 1, it should be also between negative 1 and plus 1. This equation does exactly that. You can verify that by substituting 255 for x and calculate the new x value, and again substitute the value 0 for x and calculate once again. In the deep learning textbook by Joshua Bingyu, there is a dedicated section to representation learning. It is one of the interesting concepts of deep learning. So let's take for example AlexNet architecture, in which the network consists of convolutional blocks followed by fully connected layers. The convolutional blocks function as feature extractors, learning interesting patterns such as shapes, edges, and corners. The convolutional blocks also learn these patterns while preserving the hierarchical topology of features. For example, if the network is trained on cropped human faces, the network will learn that the eyes and the nose will be located inside a face and so on. 
The output of the convolutional block is called a feature map or a vector representation of the input. For example, in AlexNet, the first dense layer of 4096 neurons will be a valid representation for ImageNet dataset samples. The same idea extends to autoencoders where the output of the encoder serves as a compressed version of the input. It turns out that the output of the discriminator in the DC GAN architecture serves the same purpose. That is, the discriminator can learn useful features from unlabeled datasets in an unsupervised learning. This is quite useful in cases where there are not many labeled samples available for training. In a paper published by Mikulov on learning feature vectors or word embeddings for natural language processing, it was found that interesting arithmetics like addition and subtraction apply on the resulting vectors. One example which is actually a very famous one, the word man can be subtracted from the word king and then added to the word woman to give the result of a queen. That is of course a vector addition and subtraction on the learned representation. So the question now, is this applicable to GANs? In fact, it holds true for the representation learned by the discriminator of a DC GAN. The authors have averaged three vector representations of three sample images in three categories. The first category was a man with glasses. The second, a man without glasses. The third, a woman without glasses. Then performed the arithmetics and voila, here you get a woman with glasses. You may ask why there are nine images of the lady with glasses. The center one is a direct result of the operation. The rest of them were produced after adding noise to the vector representations to test the robustness of the algorithm. This is a very common technique to test the model's robustness by simply adding Gaussian noise to the inputs and observe the results. The authors have also performed other experiments to visualize the learned convolutional filters, remove some neurons from the generators, etc. It was also found that the vector representation can be used to change the pose or the emotion on the resulting image. For example, they subtract smiling faces from angry faces and then add the difference to an angry face to make it smile. So a question for you now is whether you can apply transfer learning using a GAN. Think about it and share the answers together on the course forums. In the next lecture, you shall get your hands dirty and implement DC GAN. See you in the next lecture.